presenting today a customer story about how to integrate, uh, uh, how we did the integration of all the systems in the University of Exeter. Uh, I'm glad I'm not doing a technical uh, chat today because by changing the names, uh, the previous uh, speakers, basically they pointed all of the issues, all of the things we've been doing. They've been talking about all these meetings with third parties. So just changing the names, we're going to find more or less the same issue in all of our integrations, okay? So first of all, let me introduce the stakeholders of this uh, uh, project task we carried. Uh, University of Exeter, probably very well known from some of you. Uh, Chuck Ray Consulting, our company, and WSO2, and I'll be doing some more details on these uh, uh, stakeholders. So, University of Exeter, one of the best uh, universities in the world, is on the top 12, 200 universities, on the top 10 in the UK. They have around uh, 21,000 students. So it's basically like uh, going into a project and do integration on a city, okay? They have all type of system. They have student systems, they have uh, HR, they have quite a few of systems. Um, always, and maybe this is not mentioned enough in these uh, talks, uh, the important part, or one of the key points to have a successful integration is the people, the team. Probably these two persons, Chad Crossman, the chief architects of the University of Exeter, and Jamie Cartin, the, solu uh, the solutions architect, uh, are a big part of the success and probably should be them, the ones that are, uh, should be here explaining what was the business case, how they come uh, through us, how they decide, WSO2, all the POCs they did at the beginning, and how they plan the whole integration of the university. So the business case on, on University of Exeter came uh, because uh, they had this huge amount of systems, and they needed to change one of the biggest core systems. So while in the, in the process, they wanted to have uh, move out from legacy, basically the same case we've seen before. Uh, they wanted to go cloud in some of the cases. They wanted to uh, decouple, okay, move away from this monolithic thing and more into a service-oriented architecture. Okay, so uh, Chuck Ray Consulting, the company I'm working at, is a well, not that small anymore, uh, but it's very engineer-driven. Basically, there are three persons that are not engineers in the company, two of them here, hi there. Uh, one curious thing is that we only, only focus on WSO2 products, okay? So all of our engineers come from different backgrounds. We have Oracle experts, we have IBM, we have everything, but in WSO2, we only focus on that. On, uh, in Chagro, we only focus on WSO2 products. That makes us a very highly expertise company on these products. So probably part of the key of the success when we go and do an integration on this uh, type of uh, works. We are a WSO2 premier partner. We have an international workforce. So we have here Spain, UK, Canada, and we are, uh, have uh, people in South America, Northern Europe, etc. We usually uh, try to focus on long-term customers, okay? So probably all of you know, because you are in this business, uh, integration is always strategic, okay? It's never something that is, let's do this and pass through these few months till we go to another place. Integration is always long term. So we try to focus on those type of opportunities a lot uh, because it's kind of a marriage you get with your customers. So it's more or less uh, never 
nothing less than years of work. Uh, so we focus on architecture, development, and training. Now, big picture, kind of try to get the techies scared. Uh, this was the scope. So when we came into uh, this project, this Chad and Jamie, they had already thought about the architecture, how they wanted to move from what they were monolithic, and, and they already knew all the touch points. The scary thing here was that there is more than 50 different third parties uh, software to engage with, okay? Huge amount of meetings. You already heard this on the, on the previous uh, speaker. Over 1,500 hours of meeting, we did the rough calculation. We built, again, uh, documents, tried to see what, the, what are the touch points, tried to see what, what, where the interface, et cetera. We had absolutely any case in the book, file, FTP, SFTP, web services, REST, SOAP, JMS, the complete thing, okay? Security. Uh, so the picture is just to make you aware that uh, the, the project was huge, a huge uh, uh, problem to solve, okay? So the plan, the resources, and the timeline. So we had the plan, Exeter, third, uh, Exeter team and third-party stakeholders, Chuck Ray teams on-site and near short. We kind of uh, use a hybrid uh, approach for this. So we had uh, people at the university doing all the base work, learning all the, all the, getting all the information, all the documentation, doing all the design, architecture, and all the interfaces, et cetera, and throwing work to our offshore teams, okay? We had a small advantage because uh, here in the last line that we can see, and that's, again, a coincidence with the previous uh, speakers, we only had three months to do this huge thing. What, what with integration? We, we always have these really short timelines. Who's designing this? Okay, but in, luckily in uh, Chagray, we have this uh, kind of solution accelerator we built uh, a few years ago and that we are evolving it. That is uh, to build WSO2 platforms from code is like we design the architecture, we put that on a file, and we can build the whole platform. I mean, install SQL, install the clusters, uh, Kubernetes, Docker, load balancers, VPN, the whole thing, okay, just from code. That allows us uh, to do repetitions, build uh, new platforms, QA, uh, testing environments, production, pre-prod, development, with a very easy way of doing you know, very rapidly. On top of that, one of the things that uh, wasn't uh, really close when we started the, the project is which cloud. So we began uh, with a decision of doing it on-premise. Luckily, Zero Solution is able to create all this on-premise with virtual machines. Then we moved to AWS, so we just generate the same platforms in AWS in the cloud. Then we change to Azure. And today we are back on AWS, and that's on three months. This without impacting the project timelines in a significant way, okay? So it's just making decisions, changing, and things like that. Uh, another picture to make people aware of all the integration, so basically, Two or three of these pictures would be a small design of some of the integrations. So we have a huge amount of documentation with all the diagrams, all the information, all the designs, file formats, WSDLs, REST, Swagger, the whole thing, okay? So a lot of work in the design part, a, a lot of work for the analysts, people that were on, on site on the university. Um, some 
very high level uh, pictures on the designs of the, of the platform. Uh, glad again that the previous uh, speakers went into more detail, but it's basically, or surprisingly, we end up doing the same things uh, coming from different environments. So again, we have Git uh, repositories, uh, automation, Jenkins, uh, building uh, mockups, all the testing environments, uh, same issues with connecting to backends, Oracle, a myriad of different type of backends. Some of them, again, uh, with no information. We have to remember that, as we saw at the beginning, uh, Exeter University has a long story. So they've been uh, in the digital world for a long time, and they have uh, all these systems, some of them better documented than other ones. Okay, so we face basically the same issues when we go uh, into the integration world. Luckily, uh, and probably this is a good place to say thank you to the Exeter team, people on the finance uh, department, they've been very helpful. Uh, Steve, well, Jamie and Chad already spoke about. So again, important to have a key of success is the people that is involved, how you sell this uh, type of projects. Always there is some kind of uh, uh, rejection to change. So they were very happy and they were moving forward and that's been part of the success. By the way, we delivered within the three months, okay? Well, three months and three days, I believe, so more or less the same. Again, we're using uh, all this technology, dockerizing, uh, making the clusters, uh, Kubernetes for elasticity, load balancing, et cetera, et cetera. All the security in the web, uh, in the cloud, I think there were some questions before about security. Uh, locally, uh, Exeter already has uh, some experience on cloud, so we didn't have to convince them. They were already on board on that uh, side. Um, and Basically, my last uh, slide, I haven't been too techy. Uh, why WSO2 was the right choice for the University of Exeter? Because at the beginning, they were having a look of different technologies, but when we did, basically, all the companies did their own POCs, they said, well, WSO2 is the right choice. The modular design, was vital for them, so they, are only, they only need to install and use whatever the use case they're needing. If they don't need a message broker, they don't have the need to install it. So the modular design is vital when you have this huge amount of uh, different integrations. The ability to engage uh, with CI and automation, okay, that's part of our excuse to uh, implement our zero platform. It's been proven to be very helpful, okay? So we, we go to our customers, in this case universities, and build all this uh, uh, infrastructure in a very little amount of time that give us an edge on, on the project. So we uh, earn a lot of time, things that might take one month or two months to, to uh, deploy. We can do it in days. Okay, um, another thing that helped a lot is the ability to be in the, be in hybrid, so do things on premise, do things on the cloud, half and half, okay? That's on WSO2 DNA, so it makes our life quite easier. Uh, also, uh, the developer-friendly design to build and reuse integration components. In this case, I'm talking about uh, how uh, the architects uh, uh, had this holistic view of the, the whole integration that allow us to build very early all the reusable components. Like, we have many file integrations, so we'll focus on there, make something a standard, and reuse and reuse and reuse that will gain us, will give us the advantage. And WSO2 allows to do this very easily, okay? And, of course, 
the WSO2 development support that is being proven helpful. We had typical things like trying to deploy uh, connectors and having the typical issues. There, uh, I've been using different uh, support scenarios from different brands in the industry for many, many years. And one thing that uh, I love from WSO2 is that they usually answer really, really fast. If you are able to do the correct question, even in less than 24 four hours, you have the correct answer. So uh, thank you, WSO2, there also. And thank you.